This is 1010 The Navigator, and this is the 2022 Anunnaki Code, The End of the World and Their Return to Earth by Maximilian de Lafayette. We are on chapter 33, question 33. What is the nature of the ulema? What are the ulema? Are they gods, angels, and spirits? Note, the ulema are not the Anunnaki ulema. The ulema are not gods, angels, or spirits. The ulema are divided into two categories called daraja. The first category, category one, the enlightened teachers. They are humans living on earth and they are called mao na wa rin. The second category, category two, the super beings called guardians. They live in various higher physical and non-physical dimensions. Category one, the enlightened teachers, Mao Na Wa Rin. They are a group of thinkers, philosophers, and scientists. They are the custodians of important books and ancient manuscripts about the origin of mankind the creation of the universe and the human races, and the multitude of subjects pertaining to vital aspects of humanity, intelligent beings, and other dimensions that are closely connected to humans. The Ulema group was also called the Society of the Book of Ramadosh. The Ulema do not discuss religions. Although many of them belong to various religious beliefs and faiths, three of the most important manuscripts very ancient texts, they keep in utmost secrecy and with an enormous reverence are, one, the book of Ramadosh, also called the book of Radosh, the main topic, the origin of mankind and how various extraterrestrial races genetically created the human race. Two, Shams el Maref al Kobra, the son of the great knowledge, the main topic, the study of superior beings who live in higher physical and non-physical dimensions and who are watching over us. Number three, al haq justice and truth, main topic, laws that allow mankind to live righteously on earth and allow human beings to prepare themselves for the next life. Guidance for the next journey is provided in metaphors and parables. The Ulema group, was created during the time of Hiram, the Phoenician king of Tyre. It included illustrious astronomers, astrologers, physicians, mathematicians, scientists, philosophers, and metaphysicists, metaphysicists from Sumar, Phoenicia, Syria, Syria, excuse me, Palestine, Egypt, and Greece. Later on, leading figures of the Knights of the Saint John of Malta, the Templars, the wise men of Arwad, and Hiram Grand Orient Masonic Rites members joined the Ulema group. Mao Na Wa Rin means those who have received the light of the great knowledge. Category two, the superior beings called guardians. The guardians are not human beings. They are not spirits either. Humans were taught to believe that the world seen and unseen consists of a physical life on earth and a spiritual life after death. The ulamas, the ulemas view are different. According to the book of the son of the great knowledge, the world or universe usually referred to as existence, wujud, contains more than a physical life and spiritual life. Wujud consists of 11 dimensions Humans are aware of three dimensions on earth. The fourth is the one that exists in the next life. That is the limit of their understanding and interpretation of the world, the physical and spiritual. To the ulema, existence, including human existence, goes beyond the fourth dimension. The guardians live in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions. In the eighth dimension, live the ultimate ones, and so on. Thus, the guardians who live in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions are noble entities who regularly communicate with chosen human beings and enlightened teachers 
for various reasons and purposes. The guardians are not physical beings, however. They can manifest to us in any shape or form using a plasmic organism or substance that the human mind cannot comprehend. The ulema receive knowledge and guidance from the guardians. What is the relationship between humans and the ulema? One, the physical ulema. The physical ulema who live on earth are not very much different from the rest of us as physical humans, but on other levels, they are very different from human beings. For existence, for instance, to name a few. One, they do not age as rapidly as we do. A 70-year-old ulema looks like a 45-year-old man. Two, ulema live longer than ordinary human beings. Their lifespan on earth is approximately 135 years. Three, they are vegetarians. Yes, they do drink, but with moderation, some smoke, but not cigarettes. Their pipe tobacco is made out of aromatic dried fruits. Aromatic dried fruits. Four, they have an enormous compassion towards animals. In fact, they communicate so well with animals the majority of them accept crocodiles, snakes, insects, carrying bacteria and diseases, and four reptile species. Animals sense their presence and welcome them. Ulema have developed a special sign language to facilitate their communication with animals, and usually animals respond in the same manner. Five, Ulema are well-versed in many languages and they are fond of languages of ancient civilizations, including those of vanished cultures. Ulema learn foreign languages very easily and rapidly. Usually an Ulema learns a foreign language in less than a week. Six, Ulema can read a voluminous book and memorize it in its entirety in less than three hours. Seven, Ulema can foresee the future and predict events to happen in several dimensions, including our own. Eight, ulema are in constant contact with the guardians. Nine, ulema knowledge in arts, science, history, and religious is limitless, etc. These qualities and gifts allow them to fully understand the human psyche, read our minds, and sympathize with our tastes, needs, and aspirations. They are socially active, however, they do not reveal themselves to the rest of us nor get involved in groups activities. They dislike organized religions, politics, fantasism, prejudices, stock markets, financial interests, publicity, egoism, and excessive authority. It is not so easy to gain membership in their groups and societies. Membership is by invitation only, and the membership proceeds or procedures and initiation process, formalities and rituals are rigorous. Many applicants have failed because of the tests they had to go through. Two, the non-physical ulema. The non-physical ulema do not reveal themselves to us. They communicate with the physical ulema on the exclusive basis through, one, secret codes and visual language, two, ectoplasmic apparitions, three, transmission of mind, four, visitation through baabs, five, telepathy triggered by a conduit implanted and activated in the brain cells. Ordinary human beings are not trained nor prepared to communicate with them. They can't see them and they can't sense their presence, even though sometimes they are very close to them. And that concludes chapter 33. And I'm gonna go ahead and read chapter 34. Chapter 34, question 34. What are the plans of the Anunnaki for their return in 2022? The answer, the Anunnaki are coming back to clean the earth. As was mentioned in a previous question, they created the earth, started developing the life forms, fostered the evolutionary process and managed to accumulate an enormous amount of useful knowledge, all of which they telepathically transferred to Nibiru, where it was much appreciated. Unfortunately, the knowledge leaked to the greys at Zeta Reticuli, 
and they decided to use the humans and sometimes the cattle in their doomed experiments that were geared to save their own miserable race. While doing this, they sadly contaminated the pure genetic material the Anunnaki so painstakingly created, and the humans that resulted were no longer suitable for the study. That was the reason why the Anunnaki deserted their research on Earth. Now, after receiving pertinent information over the last 40 years, the Anunnaki had decided to come back and clean up their creations. Whether they are doing it out of benevolence or because they wish to pursue their laboratory work, we do not know as of yet. But one thing is clear, any human being being heavily tainted by the Gray's DNA will be destroyed. Some who are lightly contaminated will be evaluated further, but in other dimensions, so as not to endanger the cleaned up earth. Those who are not contaminated will remain on earth, which will be immeasurably improved by the removal of the contaminated humans. The Anunnaki know who is contaminated and what is the contamination level by using the conduit. So to them, it is extremely easy to make the selection. This process of selection will be extremely fast, a matter of minutes. Most humans do not have a functional conduit, only a latent one. We must use other ways to find out what is our chances for survival so we can take steps to improve the odds. This will be done individually. Each person must examine his or her own level. You will not be helping or you will not be helped by joining a religious group or going to therapy or any other form of relying on someone else. You will have to do your own work, but it is not difficult to find out. Figuring it out requires thought and introspection only. The Gray's DNA. The Gray's DNA have created greed, violence, and an unbelievable cruelty within our nature. Such characteristics were not part of the original DNA, material used to create humans. Since the original DNA was given by the Anunnaki themselves, who had intended to create humans in their image, therefore each person must examine his or her own life carefully. The list of offenses is extremely long, but here are some of the examples of people who are contaminated by the Gray's DNA. They are divided into three groups. If any of these traits exist in you, if you have committed any of these atrocities, try to remove them as soon as possible from your life if you wish to survive after 2022. But even with all your hard work, there is no guarantee. People who exhibit heavy graze DNA contamination. Those who torture or support torture by others for any purpose whatsoever. Murderers, unless in self-defense, which sometimes occur in situations such as domestic abuse by a contaminated spouse, rapists, child molesters, child abusers, senior abusers, spouse abusers, those who commit violent robberies, illicit drug manufacturers, distributors, and pushers, those who engage in enslaving women, children, and young boys in prostitution rings, criminals who use their form of religion as an excuse for their heinous crimes. This includes all religious fanatics, such as suicide bombers. Those who destroy lives by depriving them of ways to support themselves for their own greed. This includes the top echelon of corporate executives who have lost any sense of humanity in their treatment of thousands of people and feel that this is strictly business elected officials who have sold out for power and greed and who are willing to destroy their own countries to, I don't know what that word is, to elevate themselves. Elected officials who are willingly participating in destroying the ecology of the planet because of their close association with the oil and other forms of commercial energies producing countries and their corrupt rulers, Any politician, military personnel, or anyone who is engaging in trade with the Greys, allowing them to continue the atrocities in exchange for technical and military knowledge. Lawyers and judges who play games at the legal system 
for their own game, sending free child molesters and other violent offenders in the name of reasonable doubt, those who destroy lives and reputations by identity, identity theft, those who torment animals. These include not only the people who hurt and mutilate animals for their own sick pleasure, but also those who support dog fights, cock fights, and bull fights, and those who beat their horses, donkeys, or dogs those who legally mutilate cats by removing their claws or hurting their vocal cords, owners of puppy mills who force female dogs to reproduce by animal rape, and those who abandon their animals or chain them indefinitely, sometimes allowing them to die by such neglect. People who exhibit medium grazed DNA contamination. People who believe that discipline requires physical punishment in children or adults. Middle echelon executives who only take orders from their superiors as their corporations are destroying the economy of their own countries to save their own skin. Those who in the name of fashion and beauty have hurt countless young girls who have succumbed to eating disorders, some of, who, some of whom have actually died while the owners and designers have made a fortune for themselves. Irresponsible children who allow their children to grow up with raised values rather than human and Anunnaki values. Hunters of animals who believe they are doing it only for food but do not feel a joy in killing. <clears throat> Owners of factory farms whose animals are not tormented but live in a miserable life. People who eat any form of meat, the Anunnaki believe in strict vegetarian diet supplemented by milk and eggs from animals that are treated humanely and allowed to live out their life comfortably and die naturally. People who exhibit light grazed DNA contamination. People who are willing to advertise products that may be harmful for gain. People who are willing to import products that may be harmful for gain. People who object to social reform that may help the greater number of others, such as healthcare or better equalization of income for gain, people who are encouraged in the fur trade, people who are willing to influence others through brainwash advertising, such as the cosmetic industry for gain, racist, sexist, and agitists who are willing to allow their prejudice to influence their behaviors to others, people who are willing to spend millions of dollars in frivolous pursuits, Diamond studded collars for dogs who really don't care about anything but love and food, $200,000 wedding cakes, just to name a few, while millions around them are starving. People actively engage in aggressively taking over, thus destroying the livelihood of many. Anyone deliberately sending a computer virus for fun. This is only a partial listing. Examine your heart. There may be other reasons to assume you are contaminated. There are only 12 years to the final date. And this concludes chapter 34.